Mobile use has literally exploded on the African continent due to obviously increased connectivity. This of course means mobile operators playing in the African space either need to build new tower infrastructure or they need to gain access to existing. That said, what are some of the biggest challenges you're seeing from an infrastructure perspective at the moment? Mm, it's a good question. Um, I think to start with, I mean, building towers is, is tough work in Africa. It's expensive. Um, cost of capital is high, relatively speaking. The markets don't have the volume you've, say, got and the capacity to grow, so as you have in, in China as an individual market or even as in India. Um, and so that presents a unique set of challenges and opportunities for us um, and for the industry as a whole. Now, subscribers in Africa, we're seeing prices per minute for, for voice range anywhere from 5 cents to 30 US cents, this is, um, so um, per minute. Um, and we're seeing that come down. And that means that you know, any, any fat in the system, in the supply chain, has to be worked out um, over a period of time. One of those things is, is really about using existing sunken capital resources better. So allowing more operators to use the same type of basic, very expensive infrastructure um, to, to provide signal capacity and coverage to their users. And hopefully that will help them manage as these cost pressures that competition brings um, it'll, it'll help them bring their costs more in line with what those pressures are. Now you um, just touched on it, the fact yes. that Africa and mobile operators are shifting away from the traditional one operator per one tower model. Yes. What has your experience been in this regard? You know, it's funny, I mean, I, I go back, I've, I've been lucky enough to have been involved in the, the African telecoms business for nearly 15 years now and um, there was real pushback against sharing of infrastructure um, and you could understand that 10 years ago and where coverage was the differentiator. If you had a mast, you had coverage, you could get a customer. And if you didn't, you couldn't. Um, now, those days have passed. You've got five, six, seven operators in certain countries. Um, so coverage is not as great a differentiator. I think a differentiator is how you manage your costs. And nearly everybody has got it um, now. So it's very seldom we'll find an operator that doesn't want to find a way to realize value from their existing assets, their tower assets. Um, the odd example would be an operator that is in a five, um, a five operator market and has a really dominant position. And their view is, why would I give my competitors such an easy leg up to catch up with my market share, my coverage, my capacity? Um, so that's the only place we're finding any pushback now. There's really a very good general acceptance of this as a mo model. But with the cost sharing, obviously, you bring that fat down and you can bring you know, better prices to the market. Absolutely. I mean, it, you know, th those costs will reduce their, their operating costs on the sites by 30-odd percent um, per site, which is very, very significant. And just operating the sites, diesel consumption, you know, providing electricity to the sites, security on sites in a number of countries where it really is required, um, it really adds to the cost of running a site. And uh, in Africa, typically, um, you, know, you, you would find those operating costs to be between 1500 and 2500 US dollars per month per site just for the passive infrastructure, power and security. Now, there's another way to cost cut, and that is either by, we mentioned, putting someone else in your tower, it's outsourcing your tower, it's selling your tower. Yes. In terms of those three aspects, what's the most dominant uh, feature in the market right now? Well, well, there are three things you can do with your towers, in, in my opinion, and, and there are probably some more, but in combinations. I mean, the first one is, if you're an operator that is stressed for cash, you want cash, you want to expand, um, the best thing for you to do is probably sell your towers. We've seen an example in South Africa where that was done, and the towers were sold for quite a high cash value. And the, the commensurate downside to that is you've got a high leaseback fee. Mm -hmm. So uh, the monthly fee they now need to pay to be on those towers they sold is higher than if they took less money out. And we're seeing deals like that. The next type of deal we're seeing is one where operators are saying, I don't need cash. I've got a parent company that has got lots of capital at a low price. Um, I really don't want to actually even sell my assets. But what I want is I want to cut that operating cost of between $1,500 to $2,500 a month. I want to cut that down by 30, 40, 50%. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And if you, could, if you can cut your operating costs 
immediately in that basis. Now, you know, we've done that for, for Vodafone specifically. And, um, you know, their view was, we don't need cash, but what we do want to do is we want to lead when it comes to costs um, in, in, in Africa. And um, the third way that you can use your towers to create economic value for shareholders, if you're an operator that owns towers, is, um, is retain a stake in a tower company. So, you know, take a portion of cash off the table and have a joint venture with a company like ourselves who will come in, give you the independence you need as a tower company, uh, give you the marketing, sales, co-location skills that you need, and um, you can then create value by being a, a shareholder in that tower company.